I'm here in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, and the video that you're about to watch is in response to a posting that I made on Railway Preservation News uh, in response to the tornado thread, which has become quite the discussion on RYPN. The discussion at hand has to do with the uh, trough type muttering or a U-shaped type muttering, which is a which is a machined piece. It's a solid piece of steel. Uh, where the U-shape in the center has been machined out of it and then it's all completely welded together. Well, it just happens to be that while I was here in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, Matt Austin posted a note talking about the braces that are in some of these German boilers that holds the muttering together, or in other words, keeps the muttering from trying to spread apart on both sides. As I came down into the shed this morning after I had read the post on RYPN, I noticed that one of the locomotives here in the shed, of which there are five today, five German-type locomotives, one of them actually has this brace, so I thought I would uh, bring the video camera down here and give you a quick video uh, documentary on what we're seeing with this particular brace, why it was put in, and also to give you a few detail shots of a German type boiler here in Switzerland where you can see an all welded boiler and we'll point out a few of the unique construction items with uh, this particular boiler. This isn't the only video that we have at Wasatch Railroad Contractors. We actually actually have a series of videos and we'd invite you to come and see the rest of our videos. You can find those videos on our webpage wrrc.us. Hope that you'll enjoy this little documentary that we've done here uh, on this German boiler. If you have any direct questions for us please feel free to get back to us but maybe this will be a new way to, to interact on RYPN so enjoy. The locomotive that we're in is a German class 23 locomotive. It's really a unique locomotive. It's got really big drive wheels was made as a fast passenger engine, not hauling a lot of cars, but it, it's really a unique engine. The boiler sits way up above the frame. Uh, it's a very tall looking locomotive the way that the boiler is designed, but this particular locomotive and this boiler were built in 1955 uh, for the DB, for the, for the German Railway. And this boiler is an all welded boiler. In other words, it doesn't have any rivets in it at all. And I'm just going to point out a few of the unique features of this particular boiler, but at this line right here, which this is the weld line, this bottom piece is the machined part of the muttering, this U-shaped muttering that's in this. And once the U is machined out of the muttering, and once the boiler's built, or during the construction process anyway, they bring the muttering to the, to the side sheets and to the wrapper sheet on the outside, and they weld it from the outside in. So this weld was put in from this direction. So the root pass went into the very bottom of the two prepared pieces and then the weld was filled up and the weld was brought out to this point. Um, most likely this weld was put in uh, in the flat position. In other words, the boiler was laid down in a flat position and then the weld was put down in the flat position like this as opposed to being done in position where this weld would have been a horizontal position. One of the unique aspects of an all welded boiler is that typically they do all of the welding or as much of the welding in the flat position as they can. This allows for flux core welding to be used or uh, excuse me not flux core but um, submerged arc welding uh, where you actually have a layer of flux that's being poured onto the, the weld area as opposed to a shielding gas or a coated electrode those types of things. Same is true with the stay bolts. A lot of these stay bolts here, not a lot of them, all of them are fillet welded stay bolts and the welds, when the welds were done originally, were done as much as possible in the flat position. So again, they would rotate the boiler uh, to, to make sure that this fit. Now what's interesting about these bolts is that, that uh, these fillet welded stay bolts uh, are a little bit bigger than the stay bolts that we use. And there are a lot of different sizes of bolts. You can see just as we go around, you can see some smaller ones, you see a couple of bigger ones. And you can see that some of the bolts have been changed and others have not. But you can see, uh, just generally, I'm going to give you a picture here. This bolt is about a one inch diameter bolt. But you can see how large the, the fillet weld is. And one of the misconceptions about a fillet welded bolt is that we're trying to put a very small weld in there. They didn't necessarily put small welds in there. It's just that the weld doesn't penetrate all the way through the sheet. The weld just sits here on the outside of the sheet, grabbing the bolt and attaching it to the, to the sheet right here. So those are a few of the interesting aspects about this boiler. But again, this entire boiler 
is all welded construction now. The beam that my arm has been sitting on as we've been filming here is this beam that Matt Austin talked about that, that keeps the uh, mud ring together. And the idea here is that the mud ring over a course of time or through the process of firing the boiler up and, and the boiler expands naturally, that it actually uh, bulges out like this on the two outsides. And this brace was put in on this locomotive to keep the two sides, the, the two long legs of the, of the mud ring and the firebox from spreading apart like this. Now what's interesting, and I noted it in the uh, RYPN post that I put up, was that the practice of putting these in the German engines actually ended sometime in the 1960s. The other German locomotive boilers that are here, and we can't get as, as detailed footage of those boilers, but those boilers do not have this brace in them and never did have these, this brace in them. Uh, one of the boilers that I will show you a picture of was built in 1960 by a third party boiler maker and uh, that boiler did not have the braces put in it. So sometime between 1955 and 1960 this practice of putting these braces in was abandoned and done away with. And I believe that what they found was that there really wasn't that much stress or there wasn't that much move this way in the mud ring to justify having these braces in it. So let's take a deeper look at this brace and I'll show you some interesting things about what's happened to this brace. This particular locomotive was built and designed as a uh, coal burner and it's now being converted to burn diesel fuel as it's uh, going to go to Holland and operate on public excursions during the summer season. But what's interesting about this particular brace, which this brace served a couple of purposes. First of all, it helped support the, the center grate bearer which went from the front of the firebox to the back of the firebox here. But what's interesting about it is it's full of cracks and these cracks run up and down through this brace this way. I believe personally that these cracks are due to the immense amount of heat that's put on the on the uh, grates here and on the grate bearer. Usually these items are made out of cast iron so they're cast pieces that hold the entire grate section together but this piece is clearly a steel piece because it's been welded to both sides of the boiler on the right side and the left side of the muttering. I believe that part of the reason that this practice was abandoned, in, in other words why they stopped putting these braces in, after a period of time with the number of cracks that are in this brace, this brace would have pulled apart anyway. It would have naturally cracked and just broken as we can see that it wants to do anyway right now. It's, it's, in, it's incredibly stressed and it's been fatigued. Uh, it's, it's amazing to look at it. Another thing that you can't necessarily see from this photo angle is how warped this brace is. The brace when originally put in would have been straight all the way across but now it waves like this all the way across and it's not just a single wave there's a series of waves in fact I can count them here from the top there's three four five maybe six different waves through this brace as it goes through so again the fact that it's fatigued vertically the fact that it waves uh, on this plane, which I'm going to call a horizontal plane, um, says to me that this brace doesn't necessarily hold the entire mud ring together as much as it holds the grates and some of the other pieces. But now I'm going to show you another aspect of the brace which is very interesting, which proves the fact that this brace was put in to keep the boiler from expanding this way because the brace is cut and fit to go around the outside of the boiler and we'll go take a look at that right now. Before I take you back out to show you that brace, I want to show you the combustion chamber of this locomotive. There's another thread on RYPN that talks about rolling and beating tubes and tube ends. I want to show you an example of the German practice, which uh, in this particular locomotive, again a, a 23 class German locomotive, the tubes in this particular locomotive have been rolled in and seal welded, but they are not beaded. So very interesting that we see this typically in the German locomotives we see the tubes beaded and then seal welded whereas this particular installation and I don't know who's done it or when it was done uh, but I can tell you this particular installation includes just the tubes rolled in and then welded and then we will assume as we know a little bit about the German practice that the tubes were then re-rolled uh, to compensate for that uh, for the welding that took place. Also believe that there are no shims or ferrules in these tubes. And what we're looking at right here is a superheater tube 
and then clearly we have some smaller flues here as well. One other interesting aspect is we go back to the fillet welding and the fillet welded stay bolts. You can see here on these stay bolts, all of which are fillet welded, you can see the difference in dimensions in all of the bolts. And when I talk about the dimension in this case, I'm talking about how much the bolt sticks out of the sheet or protrudes from the sheet into the firebox. Uh, there's one right here in the knuckle that's been repaired or replaced a number of times. I'll zoom in on it here so you can see it more closely in relationship to the stay bolt that's next to it. You can see that this bolt's either been replaced and was maybe just a little bit too short or for whatever reason it's been cut, but it also has a much larger weld field around it. Uh, so maybe there was a, a crack or something else that was going on here in the, in the uh, transition from the combustion chamber down to the throat sheet of the firebox. But interesting to note these, these small things. Another thing that you'll notice also is that these bolts don't suffer all that much from cinder cutting. Uh, we saw cinder cutting in the big locomotives back in the day of steam, but we don't see that so much in, in this particular case. And we don't see cinder shields as well. Cinder shields being placed around the stay bolt to keep the stay bolt from cinder cutting. Pretty interesting study on uh, fillet welded stay bolts, the application of the stay bolts, and also the tubes on this German locomotive. Now let's go outside and we'll look at this brace again. This particular scene is being taken from the bottom of the left side of the muttering where this brace wraps around the bottom of the U-shaped uh, foundation ring. And what's interesting about it is on the right hand side of your screen you can see very clearly that this brace was designed and fit all the way around the outside of the boiler. In other words, it was designed and put in as a clamp to keep the two sides of the, the, the firebox, the left and right side, from expanding away from each other and holding it together. But again, even from this view, I'm going to try to zoom in here on the cracks that we see and the fatigue that we can see in this particular brace, uh, which holds these two pieces together. And I wouldn't doubt that this piece today is actually longer than it was uh, originally. In other words, it's, it's actually grown, it's been stretched, and it's been pulled apart to where I don't believe that it serves its purpose anymore as I explained just a few minutes ago. Well look, we promised we'd keep this video show short. Hope that you've enjoyed looking at the, the boiler of this particular locomotive. We'd like to thank our friends here at DLM and also William Cook uh, Rail in Schaffhausen, Switzerland for allowing us the opportunity to be here in Switzerland. We just had a great week moving the 141R number 568. We're going to have that video out in just a couple of weeks. But again, we have a lot of great videos that we've done as we've traveled on, uh, around the world and looked at different locomotives and different boilers. So we hope you'll take just a minute and look at our webpage, wrrc.us, for more videos. And keep your eye open for other videos that we have. We'd love to do another video like this for RYPN. So if you have a question that you want us to do a, a video uh, shooting of, just send us that question either through our webpage or through RYPN, and we'll do the very best we can to bring the camera out, take some pictures, and show you what we see. Thanks again for watching and we'll hope to read and see more of you on RYPN. Bye now.